Hi everybody, Fox Nomad here and today I want to help you travel smarter by reviewing Cricket Wireless. It's a contractless cellular service in the US that many of you asked me to review and after using it for the past months, I've come to the conclusion that using Cricket is sort of like a coconut. The best parts are inside of a rough exterior. So Cricket Wireless is a budget mobile carrier that's been aggressively expanding their service and offerings to better compete in an ever more crowded budget carrier space. Cricket operates in the United States, including Hawaii and Alaska, and also works in parts of Canada and Mexico as well. It operates as a mobile virtual network operator, MVNO for short, which means Cricket Wireless doesn't have their own cell tower infrastructure. Since Cricket is owned by AT&T, the Cricket Wireless mobile talk text and data services use AT&T cell towers. And unlike some other MVNOs, Cricket Wireless acts kind of like a big carrier. They have good service, they have very good coverage, the customer service is okay, but also acting like a big carrier is one of their main weak points. Let me explain. Cricket Wireless has a few plans to choose from. In my test, I went with a 5 gigabyte, $30 a month plan, but they also have a 10 gigabyte unlimited and unlimited plans with mobile hotspot included for 40 and 50 and $60. Unfortunately, on the 5 and 10 gigabyte plans, hotspotting, that feature so that you can share your mobile data with a nearby tablet or laptop, isn't an option. With their unlimited plan, you can add 15 gigabytes of hotspot tethering for an additional $10 though. But since that plan comes out to be $65, it just makes more sense to go with the $60 plan where hotspotting is included if hotspotting is important to you and a feature that you'll use often. So for those of you unfamiliar, you might be wondering at this point, so what is the big deal? Well, here are a few reasons you might want to consider using Cricket Wireless. First of all, it's less expensive than getting AT&T Wireless. Not a lot more expensive, but on a tight budget, the difference between a $65 a month unlimited plan or a $55 a month unlimited plan adds up over a year. Cricket Wireless is also contractless, meaning you can pay month to month for a minimum of a month, whereas some AT&T plans require a commitment of up to a year. And that's one of the confusing things about using Cricket Wireless. See, you can get a $30 a month, five gigabyte plan on Cricket Wireless, but if you look at AT&T, they also have a $30 a month, five gigabyte plan, but that plan includes mobile hotspot. And on top of that, AT&T users get preferential treatment on the network. So if you're at a concert or crowded sporting event where total bandwidth is limited, as a Cricket user, your internet will either be slowed down or unavailable and prioritized for AT&T users. Now, although that $30 plan is sort of oddly priced and the features are really not competitive with AT&T, that's not the case with all of their plans. For $40, you can get a Cricket Wireless 10 gigabyte plan, whereas on AT&T, something that's comparable, like a 16 gigabyte plan, AT&T has that for $25 a month, but that requires an upfront $300 payment to cover your service for a year. For some of you, being able to pay monthly without a contract is preferable, and also unlike some other MVNOs, you can get just one month of Cricket Wireless service. There's no like three or six month minimum. And the reason I'm bringing up all of these comparisons is because the main competitive selling point of an MVNO is usually its price. And as of right now, the way AT&T has priced their plans, it means that you really have to know how much data you're gonna use, how much talk and text you're gonna use, all of that very specifically because AT&T competes very, very heavily with the MVNO Cricket Wireless. A lot of their plans overlap. Some plans give you more features versus Cricket versus AT&T. So you really have to kind of know exactly what you need to find the right plan, the best plan, the most cost-effective plan for you. And there are other contractless cell carriers that you can choose from and other MVNOs you can choose from. But since Cricket Wireless and AT&T use the same network backbone, it's more of an apples to apples comparison. But okay, let's say you've settled on Cricket Wireless. Here's how it all works. To get started, you go to the Cricket Wireless website or download their My Cricket app. You can either bring over your own phone that's already been paid off or unlocked by another carrier or select a phone from Cricket that you'll pay for monthly. If you have an existing phone number, you can port that over as well in a process that takes about 72 hours. Now, Cricket Wireless can either mail you out a physical SIM card, which costs an additional $9.99, but even if you have an eSIM-capable phone, they still charge you for SIM activation. 
I wasn't able to get this 999 charge off my account, even though I was using an iPhone 14 Pro, which doesn't have a physical SIM card tray to begin with. The online chat wasn't much help, so I ended up having to call Cricket just to get things set up in the beginning. Our hold times are longer than usual. Your wait time will be more than 10 minutes. Thank you so much. I'll give you the call back as soon as possible. That'll be wonderful. And make sure I saw for there, right? You too. Bye -bye. I'll talk to you later. Perfect. Thanks. Bye-bye. Cricket Wireless do have stores though, but that's kind of where acting like a major carrier sort of hinders the Cricket Wireless experience. See, I don't want to have to go to a store to activate a new line or call somebody to activate a new line, and you probably don't either. When I did call though, the customer service was good. Although there was a lot of time waiting on hold, when I did finally get in touch with someone, my questions were answered pretty quickly. Like I mentioned in the beginning of this video, Cricket Wireless is sort of like a coconut. It's got a rough exterior and getting set up is sort of frustrating cumbersome, confusing. It's not very easy to get everything sorted in the beginning, but once you do, once you do, the service is really good. Now, I can't talk for the entire coverage area, but up and down the US East Coast, Cricket Wireless was solid. It works in so many otherwise dead zones in the woods or remote areas, and the internet is fast. Calls are also solid, clear, and I didn't have any issues with text messaging either. I also didn't hold back with my data and didn't use airplane mode at home like I normally do. And well, this was interesting. For those of you who've been following my data issue with another MVNO, Mint Mobile, I didn't have that issue at all with Cricket Wireless. See, I only used 2.9 gigabytes for the entire month with Cricket Wireless. And the nice thing about Cricket is you can go on their site and see how much data they've registered for your account per day. Having those records, even though they are a bit hidden on the site and takes a while to find them, it is very useful to have as a consumer. And for an overall look at your monthly data usage, you can also find that in the My Cricket app as well. My data usage habits didn't really change. And in fact, the way they did change, which is not using airplane mode so much, would have probably increased my data usage, not decreased it. And that's a good thing for me because when you go over on your data plan with Cricket Wireless, it costs $10 per additional gigabyte to top up. So if you've got a five gigabyte plan and end up hitting that limit in two weeks, it might get a little bit expensive adding extra data. So is Cricket Wireless worth $30 a month for five gigabytes? Well, on the surface, yes, but you've really got to compare their plans with other MBNOs and especially with AT&T and figure out how much usage you're actually going to use, how much data you're actually using per month to see what the right plan is for you. The cell towers do a really good job of providing data and call service and call quality. All that stuff is really, really good. But if you don't mind paying upfront for a few months in advance or paying just a little bit more, you can probably get better service and a reasonably comparable deal with AT&T. Some features you might want to look out for is that Cricket Wireless is missing international roaming, but they do have international plans that let you call 35 countries for $15 a month if you're calling landlines and they give you about a thousand minutes mobile to mobile. The full feature set is confusing because you really have to dig around and find out what each plan offers. Even the app isn't very good at just showing you what's included in your plan and what the extras are and how much it all costs. And canceling is also a bit confusing. All you have to do is just not pay. But if you miss a monthly payment and want to get your line back within 30 days, it will cost an extra 15 to $75 as a one-time fee. Starts on December 8th. You'll need to pay $30 before then to continue your service. Would you like to go ahead and make that payment in full? Yes or no? No. Uh, to restore the line from the cancellation, sometimes request 85, another time 75, another time 45. For me, the Cricket Wireless service, the talk, text, and data, that part I was really happy with. But getting things set up, the outdated website, the confusing plans, the lack of tethering, all those things are a process that I wouldn't want to go through very often. So if Cricket Wireless is a service that you're going to use a month here and a month there, then all of that added effort to get things set up and the reactivation fees and all of that probably won't make it worth it for you. It's probably easier to just go with some other prepaid plan or some other MVNO, which you can set up and get things running a lot easier. Now, as a service you might use for an extended period, like months or up to a year, then Cricket Wireless is a service that I would consider. 
but I'd also compare it closely with some AT&T prepaid plans because you get a lot of the same features, even more features in some cases at about or if not the same price. And some of the other MVNOs just have a better user experience. They have a better app. They're more digital friendly, don't really have to interact with people, all that stuff. So on Cricket Wireless, although the service is actually pretty good once you've got it set up and you're using it, the foundation is really, really solid of that service, but getting through the door can be a bit of a pain. Thanks very much for watching. That's my review of Cricket Wireless. If you have any questions, of course, you can let me know down in the comments below. And while you're down there, hit the like and subscribe buttons. I'll have new videos for you every week, and I will see you in the next video.